Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got another video in our series on uh, designs for the Iowa-class battleships that were never carried out. Uh, these primarily look at conversions to the ships to be other things, and today's video is on a World War II study to convert Iowa-class battleships under construction into aircraft carriers. By mid-1942, the aircraft carrier was reigning supreme in the Pacific, and the United States had thrown all of its pre-war carriers into the fray, and uh, most of them had not come back out. Langley had been sunk uh, in the Dutch East Indies uh, while she was being used as an aviation transport. Lexington had been sunk uh, at Coral Sea. Saratoga had been damaged at least two or three times by this point, uh, and when this study was going on, was the only operational carrier in the Pacific. Uh, Yorktown had been sunk at Midway. Uh, Enterprise was badly damaged repeatedly. Uh, Wasp and Hornet had both been sunk in the naval battles around Guadalcanal. Uh, and the newer Essex-class aircraft carriers had not entered the fight yet. Smaller conversions like Long Island were fine as aviation transports, but they weren't true fleet carriers. And so the United States looked at every major class of ship they had under construction, the Cleveland-class light cruisers, the Baltimore-class heavy cruisers, uh, the Iowa-class battleships, and the Alaska-class large cruisers. Uh, and, and they looked at uh, conversion proposals for all of these ships uh, However, they all had a couple of issues with them. Because they were not purpose-built aircraft carriers, they weren't designed to have all of the additional top weight of a hangar and flight deck on top of them. And many American ships at this time period had extremely narrow bows, uh, which were not particularly buoyant, and uh, would restrict the size of the flight decks uh, and the uh, hangar decks forward, which restricted their capacity compared to true carriers. Also, when you look at ships like the battleships or the heavy cruisers, the American battle fleet was trying to rebuild after Pearl Harbor, so there was a deficit of battleships, uh, and the United States had been hemorrhaging heavy cruisers in the waters off Guadalcanal. So neither of those classes of ships looked ideal. The Alaska-class large cruisers were perhaps the uh, most ideal looking. They were designed with the exact same power plant as the Essex-class aircraft carriers. And uh, honestly, their role as quasi-battle cruisers uh, could be better fulfilled by aircraft carriers. However, uh, those ships, despite being the same displacement, material investment, and uh, power plant as an Essex-class aircraft carrier could not carry the same number of aircraft. Uh, and they weren't even necessarily more survivable because they didn't have good torpedo protection, even though they had a better armored belt. So if these carriers got into a gunfight, they might survive a little bit longer than an Essex. But, uh, enough about other ships, let's talk about this Iowa conversion. So, uh, first off, there were a number of countries that looked at converting battleships under construction into aircraft carriers, and the Imperial Japanese Navy actually did this. Uh, and they did it with a contemporary of the Iowas. They converted the uh, Shinano, the third Yamato-class battleship, into a full-sized aircraft carrier. Uh, there have been uh, disputes about whether she would have been anything good for anything other than aviation transport, but uh, she was, in theory, a nearly unsinkable carrier with excellent armor protection and a huge size and uh, therefore capacity. Uh, in practice, before she was fully completed or had a well-trained crew on board, she was uh, caught by the submarine Archerfish and torpedoed, and then poor damage control techniques allowed that to uh, be the end of the vessel. 
though she should have been able to take those hits. And so th there is some favorability with a battleship armored carrier. Uh, the United States first purpose-built, excuse me, first fleet carriers, or their first large carriers, were the Lexington class, which were converted from battle cruisers. And uh, these ships, despite being pretty narrow forward and aft, were an excellent size, speed, had decent protection, um, and served with distinction in World War II. So, so there are some favorable things to look at here. And clearly, um, carriers were vulnerable. Both the United States and Japan had lost uh, about a dozen carriers between them by this point in the war. And so maybe taking a battleship hull with all of the armor plating would make for a more survivable carrier. The British actually made the decision to, uh, rather than building carriers with massive air groups and offensive potential, to armor their carriers better than Japanese or American carriers. And so they had armored flight decks, uh, the, their flight groups were as little as half as an American or Japanese fleet carrier. Um, but these ships proved to be highly survivable. So let's look at what the Iowa class conversion would have looked like. The idea would have been to take an Iowa partially under construction and just use the existing hull of the vessel. Everything from main deck down, uh, everything below main deck stays the same. So you've got an Iowa class power plant, which means you're going to have a very, very fast aircraft carrier. Uh, you've got the angled bow that's, that's very narrow, and that's going to restrict the flight deck up forward. Uh, and, and more importantly, it's going to reflect restrict hangar spaces up forward. If you look at an image of this vessel, it looks very much like an Essex-class aircraft carrier. It's got basically the same uh, island superstructure on the starboard side and the same 5-inch batteries and, and the same sort of anti-aircraft guns spread throughout the hull. And the Iowa-class hull is close to the same width as an Essex, a little bit longer. The Iowas fortunately stay uh, relatively wide throughout most of the middle and aft part of the ship, so that does leave a lot of aviation facilities. Let's see, so uh, a reasonable armament for this ship would have been 12 5-inch guns. That's the same as the Essex's. There would have been uh, four twin turrets around the superstructure, and then the other mounts would have been on the port side uh, edges of the flight deck, just like an Essex. Uh, the drawing I'm looking at has room for about 17 quadruple 40 millimeter guns, uh, so that's pretty good. There's also room for probably 40 or 50 20 millimeter guns along the flight deck edges. The, the Iowas are great in that they're long ships. They have a lot of surface area. You can put guns in a lot of places. And so they would have had a great anti-aircraft battery. They would have had a great electronic suite comparable to any of the carriers or battleships of the time. So they would have had uh, good air and surface search radar, uh, and they would have been at least as good as the Essexes at uh, uh, fighter direction and identifying incoming threats. Uh, in theory, they're far more survivable than the Essexes. Their, their hull is a battleship hull, so their uh, second deck armor is still the same six inches thick, it's much more than any other American carrier. Uh, their belt is 12 inches thick, much more than any other American carrier. Uh, they've got the same sort of torpedo protection. Uh, likely, like other carrier conversions, they would have used the existing magazine spaces in the hull as bomb storage and aviation gasoline storage. Uh, and so those are relatively well protected in the inside of the ship. Uh, it would have probably only had two elevators while... Essex's had three, and um, the real downside to this is even with a deck park like American carriers like to use, would have only probably been able to carry about 70 aircraft. 
Uh, whereas an Essex class carrier during World War II carried over a hundred, uh, or could carry over a hundred. Also, while an S6 class carrier is a little bit north of 30,000 tons, this would still be north of 50,000 tons fully loaded. So a huge material investment to get this sort of vessel. Uh, and, and you don't see an American carrier like this until the Midway's uh, designed during the war completed just after the war. So was this conversion worth it? Uh, did the U.S. make a mistake by not following through with it? The United States was building a tremendous number of aircraft carriers. The, the Essex class was uh, the largest class of aircraft carriers, of, of full fleet carriers, ever laid down. Uh, and in fact, by the end of World War II, we had so many of them in commission that many under construction are authorized were just canceled, and some of them that were badly damaged were held in reserve, but uh, not actually ever repaired or returned to service. So big was this fleet of carriers. Uh, and this fleet of carriers started entering the war in early 1943, and that's when uh, the first couple units made it into the Pacific. Uh, which would have been roughly a year before an Iowa carrier conversion could have taken place. Uh, and so by the time these ships made it into the Pacific, there would have already been a lot of Essex-class carriers. Now, did the United States make any of the conversions they talked about earlier? Yes, they took nine of the Cleveland-class light aircraft, uh, excuse me, light cruisers under construction, and they converted them into the Independence-class aircraft carriers right here in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, and these carriers, uh, they were able to get into the fight relatively quickly. They uh, were much lower uh, capacity and had uh, much poorer sea-keeping capabilities than a full aircraft carrier. But they had this uh, speed to keep up with the fleet carriers, and they weren't a significant investment in resources. The Clevelands were only designed to be around 10,000 tons, and uh, the, the light carrier conversions were roughly around that too. So you pay for approximately five of those with the same material it takes to make one of these Iowa class conversions, and then you get uh, roughly 200 aircraft compared to 70. You have five hulls, which uh, compared to one, whereas your one can take a tremendous amount of damage, but uh, what are the odds that the Japanese are able to find and sink five separate aircraft carriers? Um, it was a good decision. The Clevelands, while excellent light cruisers, proved to be top-heavy and not have much room for growth uh, with all of the light war anti-aircraft guns and electronics. And so they may have served more effectively as aircraft carriers than they could have as cruisers. Not so with the Iowa conversion. These ships would not have made it to the fight in time to be useful. And uh, well, then you have to wonder, would these ships have been retained in the post-war world? The Iowas were retained, and they were brought into and out of service a number of times. Many, many, many of the Essex-class carriers were retained either on active service or in the reserve fleet and brought back at various times uh, either as carriers, uh, as upgrades of their original designs, or as conversions to other things. For example, the original amphibious uh, assault ships that have turned into the modern uh, LHDs were Essex-class carrier conversions. I don't believe that an Iowa-class conversion would have had that long of a life, uh, either compared to an Iowa-class battleship or an Essex-class aircraft carrier, because the Essexes were around and they were a homogenous design, all with the same power plant and everything else. And so it was pretty efficient to keep several of them in service and strip parts off of other ones and whatnot. And the Iowas had a very niche role to fill in terms of shore bombardment. And so it made sense to uh, drag them out when you got into a shooting war to blow up some beaches. 
the Iowa class carrier conversion would have probably been mothballed relatively quickly after the war and then uh, likely wouldn't have been reactivated or converted into other stuff. Uh, and so it would have been a huge investment in resources that uh, might have fought in a couple of late war battles and then sat in mothballs for the rest of its career. And then you would have probably seen it scrapped and seen uh, its parts go towards maintaining the other Iowas or uh, getting turned into fast replenishment ships like happened with Illinois and Kentucky's engineering equipment. Just because aircraft carriers replaced the battleship does not mean that a battleship converted into an aircraft carrier would be worth retaining as opposed to a true carrier or a true battleship. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. What sorts of Iowa conversion videos would you like us to see, or would you like to see us make for future videos? Let us know. The battleship receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, but also from viewers like you. If you like the museum, and particularly our YouTube channel and the work we do here, there's a link in the description to our GoFundMe campaign. Anything you donate there goes directly back into what we do here making videos. And as always, we try to make multiple videos a week, so remember to like, share, and subscribe so you see when we put out new content. Thanks for watching.